Hello, it's Michael Loftus with Wealth and Wisdom TV, and welcome to podcast number 17. Can't believe it's been that much. So, first time here, I am a practicing financial advisor. We obviously do podcasts available here on YouTube, of course, as well as all the various podcasting platform. We'll have a link below if you would like to just listen to it. Also do market updates as well as other educational videos. So please do consider subscribing. So first up, quote of the month, a good plan violently executed now is better than a perfect plan next week. General George Patton. So this month, as we've done in the past, we're gonna correlate certain events to the retirement business. In this case, May the 4th, Kentucky Derby Day. If you have not been, you should check it out. It should be on everyone's bucket list. I've had the opportunity to go once. It was pretty awesome. So first up, training for the big day. Obviously, right? You're not just gonna go out there and just win that race. And the same goes for financial planning, investment management. It takes time, you gotta bring it together. But the most important thing is you got to keep on grinding until you get to the finish line. Next up, it takes a team. Now, if you could believe this, I'm going to read a couple here, right? So many people, have you ever seen the Derby winners? Lots of people follow that horse to the end, right? You've got the owner, multiple trainers, a head lad or lass who kind of takes care of the horse on a day-to-day, -day. stable staff, farriers, you name it, a vet, jockey, other assistants. Woo! All right, good news is our business is a little bit simpler. So one, you should have, you guessed it, a financial advisor who could handle, okay, the investment side of things and financial planning. Then you have an accountant. Now we do tax planning, different than an accountant, okay, but you should have that accountant in your stable. And then last but not least, a lawyer who should be able to help you on wills, trust, estates, etc. Okay, next up, protecting your investment. Well, obviously, if you've got this horse worth millions of dollars, you wanna make sure that you do protect it. And the same goes for your investments, right? There's different ways you can look at that. Just had a conversation today with a client about long-term care. Protect those investments, their assets by hedging. Hedging if they go into a long-term care facility, which could be a tremendous amount of money. Now, there's different ways to do that. I don't recommend a traditional long-term care policy. Well, you usually do a life with a long-term care option. That way, if you don't use, you don't lose, and you still get that death benefit, okay? So that's one way. And then just hedging during different markets, right? Markets go up and down. You don't want to have everything in one basket. That's why sometimes we have some non-correlated assets. Like yesterday, as I'm recording this, Right, most of the market was down, but some of our emerging market assets were up. So good hedge on that day. So lessons from betting, well, it's pretty obvious, right? If you bet on the favored, right, you're not gonna get as much return. So here it's risk reward, same thing. You gotta be careful. Right now where everyone's AI, AI, right? Now, risk reward, a lot of reward if you're willing to take some of that risk. We've seen some of that pull back recently, but that's why we're looking at a go anywhere process that we have, and it depends. We're not just gonna buy and hold. We're looking for certain asset classes that work in different times, but you still need some other asset classes that may not be running real hard, but giving you that stable type of return without big dips, that is what I would recommend. Okay, next up, the hats. Oh, everyone likes the hats and the outfits of the Derby. There's no doubt about it. Same thing goes with what we do, whether it's investments or your financial plan, one hat does not fit all, right? Everyone's circumstance is different. It has to be right for you. Your goals, your objections are different, which is why we have to tailor, see what I did there? tailor uh, our process to your goals and needs. So make sure that you have that as part of your overall plan, okay? So the Triple Crown, Derby, Preakness, and Belmont. Now, each of those are what? Different types of races, different types of horses, longer, whatever the case might be, right? So it's difficult to win that 
triple crown. So with retirement, different stages, right? Early, mid, mid when you're in those 40s, pre-retirement, retirement, different stages of that race, all different investments during each of those uh, periods as well. So the same, uh, the same process will apply here when it comes to your investments and your overall strategies. So fun fact, since 1875, only 13 horses have won the Triple Crown and only two have done it in the last 45 years. If you can name it, put your answer below. Okay, next up, what do we have? Financial Wellness Checkup. Always a good time, something we do yearly with our updated financial planning process. So, reviewing your goals. Obviously, some things change, right? Who knows? Maybe, and I've had this happen, People are looking to buy a house in Florida or another community. Uh, now I've got offices in Bethany Beach, Delaware, the beach, and the beach is down in Florida, but different parts of the country go close to their kids, downsize, whatever the case might be. All right, next up, checking your vitals, right? This is a wellness checkup. You can do that with uh, your blood pressure, with blood tests, et cetera. And the same thing goes here when we're looking at this. Some of the vitals, right? Budgets and expenses. That's real important right now because what's going on with inflation, not only staying sticky, but continuing to ratchet up here in the last few months, okay? So let's take a look at that, make sure and see if there's any potential impact on your overall plan, okay? Building financial immunity, all right, which is your emergency fund. Everyone should have some type of emergency fund, depends on your age and your needs, Depends on what kind of income you have. If you're retired, if you've got a pension and Social Security, what are they? Both guaranteed income streams. So we might take a lower emergency fund for them, a larger one for somebody who's in retirement but doesn't have one of the, well, probably won't have a pension. That's usually something we don't see as often anymore. And the same goes for a younger person, even a larger uh, fund, uh, <laughs> emergency fund, as we go forward. So, next up, what do we have? Screening your portfolio. A lot of correlations today here to what we're doing. So, obviously, this applies to your investment strategy. Taking a look at that now. I'm an active tactical manager, manager so we're looking at investments all the time. Is something working? Is it not working? You know, we have what's called trade and trend. Does it, is it above it? Does it continue to grow? Do we add to it? Do we trim it when it gets the high end of that uh, trend? If it breaks trade and trend, do we cut it all together or just trim it? What do the fundamentals look like? What do the outlook look like? There's a lot of factors that go in to what we do. We have five different signals that we track today. So you should always be scanning your portfolio for not only the winners, possibly trimming, but also cutting some of those losses, okay? Debt diagnosis, this is everything from credit cards to mortgages, et cetera. You know, see this with some of our younger clients or had a lot of circumstances where clients, kids will come to me uh, looking for some help on how to better save for a home, cut their expenses. And a lot of times what I see is high credit card balances, probably a car that they bought in the last few years. We know they're very high. Car payments in the five, six, seven hundred dollar range, right? Things along that nature. How can we cut some of those expenses over the long term and get ourselves down? Real important, especially now with interest rates high across the board, whether it's line of credits, I've seen eight, nine, ten percent, credit cards, 28 percent in some areas. Really ugly when it comes to those rates. So you got to be careful when it comes to that debt, okay? Prevented measures, proactive planning, right? Uh, so here, what are you looking for down the road? I think the biggest thing is what could come. Now, that could be at your home, new roof, been through that, new air conditioning, been through that, all these things that pop up over years when you're owning a home. But then how about down the road, healthcare expenses, right? We all know that's a big, a big issue yesterday. Uh, one of the biggest things that came out from our inflation report was the fact that insurance across the board is up 20 plus percent, no matter what kind, health, car, you name it, as well as home. I know that is hitting here 
with me uh, specifically. So, you know, when you're looking at that, we want to make sure that anything else out there, long-term care health needs, that's another thing we always look at with clients. So making sure we're being proactive about what's coming. And again, all that goes to the financial plan. Insurance coverage, obviously here, right? I mean, you can have coverage for that hedge we talked about earlier for long-term care. If something were to happen, you can cover those costs. Make sure your family members are being taken care of. Some of your, some of my younger clients, right? Making sure they have proper insurance. I think that that's a very good option as well. So your follow-up plan, this to me is just our ongoing process of updating your financial plan, going through all these things. What's your social security check this year? What's your pension? Any changes there? And again, going back to what I've said, what are your expenses? How have they changed? What about any gifts to kids, events, weddings, grandkids, you name it, right? All those type of things should be updated and looked at at the very least on a yearly basis. Update your plan. That's why we started what's called a one-page financial plan. We update when we get together with our clients. So next up, mailbag. I always like this part of the podcast. I get these questions. I look at them once, but then I really don't formulate an answer until I read them. So what you're seeing here is definitely right off the top of my mind. So first up, we have Jacob in Chicago. About a year ago, I looked at moving some money into an annuity, which would have protected some of my funds from loss, but I never actually did it. Now that the market has been up since then, this move seems even more appealing. Am I approaching the decision the right way? So there's two ways you can look at it. I don't do a lot of annuities with clients. It depends. Have a lot of experience in there from my corporate days. I worked in the annuity business from years on, on, on that side of the business. But you know, there's other ways you can look at it, right? Most of these programs today, they're going to give you a guarantee, what's called a guaranteed income stream. Uh, GMIB, GMWB, all these kind of different confusing acronyms, but it could be three, four, five percent guaranteed income off of your basis. Okay, so you know, for people who like that type of security that they can sleep at night, then it might be a good option for you, right? If it helps you, then yes. Now, I never recommend you're not asking here putting some, you do say some, so some of your money, sure, that could be an option, but let's just make sure. We're not going all in on just annuity. You know, today, the other thing we look at, there are some things called buffered ETFs. Not going to get too much into them, but kind of like annuities, they give you floors with upside caps, but you don't have the expenses and you also have better liquidity. You can get in and out. So that might be something you can look at when you're talking to an advisor. Next up, we have Wendy in North Carolina. I rolled over 401k to an advisor a couple years ago. He put all the money into something called American funds. Is that okay? Or should I be invested in other things? Okay, so American funds is one of the highly known mutual fund companies out there. So that's what they did. Now, kind of old school, I would say at this point, to put everything in one fund family. Just like you want to have diversification amongst different asset classes, you should probably diversify if you're going to use mutual funds, I'll talk about that in a second, okay, uh, amongst different fund managers. Now, I don't use mutual funds. I use stocks or exchange traded funds, index type funds. One of the reasons I do that is I like the fact that they're pure. So if you buy a large cap growth ETF, you are getting large cap growth. With mutual funds, you don't always get that. You get some bleed there, maybe some mid cap companies, whatever the case might be, right? Most recently, we're seeing this, a big well-known stock, which has gone, uh, one of these AI stocks has gone through the roof. It's gone from a small cap to a big cap and a large cap, but small cap funds are still holding it. So you, is it really a small cap fund? Not really. So a couple ideas there. I'm not saying it's a bad company, but looking at other options to diversify is always a good thing. Next up, we got Tony in Philly. All right, Tony, how you doing? Uh, I am 50. I'd like to retire when I'm 60. Uh, I'm willing to save aggressively to make that happen, 
but how do I determine how much I need to save each month? Well, pretty simple, right? Let's do a financial plan. Click a link below. All right. Uh, with that, we put everything in a plan. I actually just did this with a 55 year old client. They want to retire at 62. What does that look like? Well, one, we take their investments today, what they have. He's going to get a pension, both of their social securities. Okay. Then we look at expenses, vacations, all of that right now. At the end of the day, what is a financial plan? Money in, money out, surplus, deficit, right? That's what it comes down to. So that financial plan will enable you, okay, to put all that data in, plug those numbers in, run it, and look out to the future and see what it looks like, what you need to do, how much you need to put aside certain growth factors to make sure you hit your goal. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching and listening to the Wealth and Wisdom Podcast. This is Michael Loftus. Hope to hear from you soon.